sorts of world-class advice on how to remodel your kitchens, your bathrooms, how to fix all sorts of engineering disasters around your house, like this loose outlet right here that you see here today. And if this is your first time here and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click on that subscribe button down below while it's fresh on your mind and click the little gray bell icon next to it. That will make sure that you get alerted every time we upload a video because you don't want to miss a single one and YouTube won't tell you unless you click on that gray bell icon there. So today we're going to show you how we're going to fix this loose outlet here. So this is my friend's place here and they have it under contract with a buyer and the buyer's home inspector came in and did this whole analysis report here, gave a whole bunch of findings here. And one of the items that they flagged here was this loose electrical outlet. This is a very common problem that we see in houses. And unfortunately, it's something that you shouldn't have allowed it to get to the point where the inspector found it because you could have easily fixed this yourself and save yourself the aggravation later on. The buyer's probably going to walk unless all of these get fixed. So today we're going to show you how to fix this loose electrical outlet and it all starts right now. So among some of the things that he found here, it says right here, the hallway outlet is loosely mounted. Secure the outlet. So we're going to fix that. Okay, so we should always think safety first. And we always recommend that you cut the power to the outlet here before you do anything. Now, those of us who have worked things like this before and we're used to, to dealing with this, we usually don't. It's not the most safest thing in the world to do, but we're also not digging around there. We know what to avoid and what not to touch. If we're just adjusting the fact that the outlet's loose, but for you, you should definitely cut the power because see how loose this is here? Okay, so now that we see that the power is off to the outlet, we can sort of feel around in there with our tester there, power on and any of the wires in there, so we're fine. We need to find out why is it loose inside there because it really shouldn't be. So we're gonna take a flathead screwdriver right here, and this is a flathead screw here. Yours might be a Phillips head, but whatever it is, just get the appropriate screwdriver and take off the one screw that's holding that plate in there, okay? And you can remove it here. Now make sure not to stick your fingers on either side of there because that's where the wires are tied in there. Part of the problem here is that, the, and I, I see this so many times, folks, over the years, it's not even funny. I'd say almost 90% of all electrical outlets I've ever seen going all the way back as a teenager to every house that was built down here. They make the hole too big. So you see these, see how on the bottom it's gripping here? These, these brackets here are supposed to grab onto the wall. If you make the drywall hole too big, there'll be nothing for it to grab onto. So that's why it's, good, it's doing this now. So you're, you're pretty much screwed. You're, you're left without, a, without really much that you can do here. Now they have goof rings that you can buy to, to put in there that would, uh, that would sort of uh, fix all of that too. But we're going to see if we can do this here today without it. And especially since this plastic plate here was already cracked. And this is why I don't like using plastic. Every wall I've ever worked on was crooked or had issues or the outlet had issues. And the metal plates just simply don't break. You gotta have a metal plate. You can't be using plastic on this kind of nonsense here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is loosen the screw here to get the outlet back out sort of to where it should be. And again, this is another case where they used a screw that was way longer than it needed to be, probably because they knew there was problems with this outlet. I mean, come on, you didn't need a screw that long for this. You think, oh, all you have to do is just tighten something down. A lot of times, what you think is going to be the simplest little repair ends up costing you a lot of problems or a couple of trips to the store. Now, luckily, we already had this extender here. We're going to see if this ex box extender here will work and fill in some of that slack for us. Okay, so I have the, the box extender in there. Now, what I did was I just cut a slit in it just so I could get it around there without having to undo everything. Some people don't like doing that and they feel you might have more strength if you, if you don't do that, if you just leave it in one piece. And there's nothing wrong with that too, with leaving it in one piece. But I wanna see, cause I'm, we're just using it to buy us as a, as a shim, like a spacer. So we just wanna see if we can get it to screw into the, to the outlet box and pull the outlet box out. So now we tighten it down here with the plate on there. And even though the plate's cracked, I am still gonna buy another plate. Let's see how this looks. I mean, he's not, he's not pop, well, it's the plate really that's popping out, but I wanna see, is the outlet itself popping out? It's a teeny bit loose, we can adjust it some more. 
Okay, so the reason I showed you this um, box extender trick here is once in a blue moon it'll work, but it will only work if you can use ear brackets here to, to get up in front of the drywall. But so you can see this is sort of a fool's errand here because see, you're still going to have this kind of movement going on. And it doesn't do you any good to keep tightening it because if you keep tightening the screw, you're gonna just force the outlet back up against it like that. So that's useless. So you have to ditch this idea and go with a whole different tactic here, which I will show you now. Okay, so we're going to pull the outlet back out here. We're going to remove our box extender here. Okay, so now that we have it back off again, and we're going to, before we implement our solution, I just wanted to point out, see how loose the whole box is? And not only is it loose, but it's going at an angle off backwards to the right. So here, and, and first of all, I always prefer these outlet boxes to be flush with the surface. So this thing wasn't even installed at the right depth. It should be flush with the surface. And then it shouldn't be leaning back at an angle like that too. So that's going to be uh, problematic for us. And we'll have to see if we can correct that. I doubt that we'll be able to correct this because they never cut this hole even right. I don't even know if it's cut to the right width, but they definitely cut the hole as we know too big from top to bottom because the top part, the ears are hanging over the drywall fine, but on the bottom part, they're floating. And that's why we have this problem. So we're going to fix this problem with two new parts. So you'll see here I got a nice beautiful metal plate. This is actually my favorite plate. These are the ones I use when I'm doing all of my remodeling and my foreclosure units here. Because a lot of times when you're dealing with these we find that, that quite often the holes are cut too wide and so this is a wider plate. You can see, I mean it barely covers, but it's a wider plate than you normally get. So this will provide and sustain the necessary forces we need up against the wall there. And okay, then the other product we need here are these outlet spacers, and I'll show you how these work. They're really cool. They come on these strips here, and when you have these strips here, you basically take these here and you start folding them up to whatever width you need, and they snap right into each other here, kind of like that, see? So they, they're an eighth of an inch at a time, so like right there is three eighths of an inch right there. So you, you kind of measure that distance back that that outlet box is sitting, and that's the distance you need to shim up. You need to shim up that gap where the screw is going to go here through the outlet, through that air space right there, and it goes right through these shims. So now when I run the screw in, I'm not going to keep screwing the outlet and pushing the outlet back. It's actually going to ma maintain that distance from the front ledge there to where the box is. So that way it can't push. So there's a lot of code violations in this one outlet anyway, because see all of these wires here, they should be able to come like six inches out of the, the wall there. And then you see how they, they terminated the Romex in here, how it comes into the uh, box here, but the sheathing is still there. See, you can barely see it back there. So this is not really supposed to extend more than a quarter to a half an inch beyond where it, it enters into the box. That's just sloppiness. I have folded up enough of these parts of the, that we've got a half an inch here. We've got four sections here. So you can see as we screw it in here, you're gonna see the shim is gonna start moving in and occupying that gap there. And when it touches against the box there, that will set the thickness. So now we don't have to worry about the outlet going into the wall anymore, because now it's gonna draw the outlet box towards us. Okay. One of these, either the top or the bottom, is gonna see the, the drywall here. So I think since we put the shim on the bottom there, we'll, we'll let the top of it of here have the drywall. Now you may end up with a case where you have air up on top and air on the bottom. In that case, you'd have to put shims on both sides. But since we don't have that here, we're not going to bother. We can just put the screw right into the outlet there and we can start screwing this right in. All right, so since we have the case where this outlet is, the hole is just way too big vertically. So very little of this is, ever, is gonna grip any of the drywall. So remember, when you're dealing with movement, what makes these outlets wiggle is they're moving back, see that? And they pull forward as well, too. So what you have to do is, we have to minimize that right there so that it can't push back. And we're going to do that by adding another spacer up top there to fill in that gap that it's pushing backwards. Okay, so let's put the spacer here. And... Okay. 
Okay, now tighten this down here. That spacer there will prevent this outlet, the top of this outlet, from leaning back inside like it was trying to do before. Now, it looks a lot more solid there. Okay, so it can't pull out. Remember, I was able to push it back and pull it up. So it's, it's a little, little more solid in place than it was. It's not gonna be perfect because as long as this box back here can move, then you're going to have this issue. Other things we've tried in the past is we get PL adhesive and you fill in these gaps with it and it solidifies it right in place and it, and it pretty much holds it really good. It'll stick even to this drywall here, to the core of the drywall, the gypsum in there. But yeah, whoever put this box in was clearly drunk. Now we'll put the plate and see if we can get the screw to get in there. So we're relying on the plate. It's metal and it's strong. So we are relying on its ability to push against the wall while sucking the outlet forward. See how it's pulling it, the duplex right into the frame. See, it just kind of sucks it forward there. So that's on there like rock solid. All right, so there's our level there. So we know we're straight up and down. So it's looking pretty good there. All right, so I've turned the power back on. Gonna just double check the outlet. He's good there. Check out that one. And you notice how he didn't, he didn't yank or slide or anything. Look, he's just nice and tight in there. So let's, let's just review the physics here of what's going on. How did this work? Why is it nice and tight now and before it was so loose? Well, there's two things that need to happen. You need to stop the forces going that way and you need to stop the forces coming this way out, out of the wall, right? So by doing this here, by putting the plate here, okay? By having this plate here, the very fact that that screw is right there and the plate is attached to the outlet, this opposes any forces that wanna pull the outlet back into the wall. So that's why it doesn't wanna go in, see? Nice and tight only because it's attached. If I took this screw off, you'd probably be able to push these in as you saw before, because by putting that screw in, it attracted the outlet out, outward this way, right? So now what keeps us from pulling out? Well, it's the fact that the outlet box is in there sort of reasonably snug, not all that great, but we had those spacers in there too that keep, that keep the outlet at the same distance as the, the outlet box is because they're tied through those spacers that are eating up that gap. If we didn't eat up the gap with those shims, those spacers there, you would be able to push the outlet all the way in and probably back out too. It, it just allows it to move, travel along the body of that, that distance there on the screw. Yeah, so this outlet had a very miraculous recovery here. Let me look at this, it's just not budging when before it was just pulling away from the wall. finding this video useful so far and as you can see there's a whole lot of information for you to take in here you can't just bust into one of these outlets and start messing around unless you really know what you're doing here so we showed you the what to do here and we made it come out right for you and if you found this video useful make sure you go ahead and give us a thumbs up down below that tells us that you like us and if you haven't subscribed to us yet and you want to stay up to date and up your game on um, home repairs and home remodeling and all sorts of other tool reviews then go ahead and smash that like button down below there and after you do that make sure you click that little gray bell icon next to it that way you'll be alerted every time we upload a video otherwise every time we upload videos YouTube will not even let you know you won't even know that it ever happened unless you hit that subscribe button with the bell icon so that's it for this week folks thank you so much for tuning in and we'll see you all on the next one